Greetings to all our Physio TV viewers. Today is a very special episode as uh, we kind of, I kind of get to interview a very special person in our institute in a special segment of Physio TV, which is called Road Less Travel. We usually interview people, dignitary, noteworthy physiotherapists who have had a very different journey or whose journey has been an inspiration to many. So today I take the opportunity uh, to kind of introduce as well as interview a mentor, a guide, and a great teacher, Dr. Nilima Bedekar. Greetings, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, Thank greetings you so from Vizio TV. Yeah. Thank you. Ma'am so is a ma'am has graduated from GMC Nagpur. She has done her post graduation from UK. She has had a PhD from the Pune University. She's a professor and the head of department of musculoskeletal physiotherapy department at Santeti Institute College of Physiotherapy. She's also a vice principal at our institute. She's a PG guide or a postgraduate guide. She's a PhD guide and she's a former academic council member and chairman of the UG Board of Studies at MUHS Nashik. Ma'am has had her expertise in women's health, yoga, electrotherapy, just to name a few. And she has over 30 publications in national and international journals. I welcome you, ma'am. Thank you so much <laughs> for all this kind and elaborate introduction. In fact, uh, yes, ma'am. But the very <laughs> fact that we are even interviewing ma'am today is also because of a special honor. She received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Narkod Nagpur, which is basically a Nagpur association uh, for uh, children with orthopedic and other disabilities. To just name the full form, it's Nagpur Association for the Rehabilitation of Children and Adults with Orthopedic and Other Dis Disabilities, Narkaud. They gave ma'am a special honor of a Lifetime Achievement Award in August of 2021. So ma'am, uh, in recognition of that award also, and she has recently received other awards also recently, which we'll be talking in the near this thing. But this award is special. So I'm kind of going to ask ma'am to first start from this award and then we'll take the journey back. So please allow me to share the screen so that I can share a few moments or photographs of that honor. Yes, ma'am. So this is the Narcod Institute, which is uh, or an association. It's a charitable association, which is there in Nagpur. Uh, Ma'am is receiving this award in August of 2021. You can see the pictures here. And ma'am, if you can tell us a little bit about that day and how it felt to receive this honor. Yeah. yeah. Actually, when I got uh, the call from Dr. Mrs. Nita Moda, who looks after the Narcord Institute, the physiotherapist, chief physiotherapist there, I was like pleasantly surprised when she said that I am the recipient of this award. She was like, I couldn't believe myself. I just said, I will just confirm what I have heard, and but it was true. And then there was also, she said, I will have to go there, could I go there? And I, or because it was just the COVID thing just ended or about to end. So I said, no, I would love to go in person and receive this award. Also, she said um, that one oration talk I had to give. So it was an oration award and a lifetime achievement award. So it was two presentations over there with a group and then they relayed it online on the same day. So it was like, you know, it's such a big institute and it's a proud privilege that they are doing it even for an academician like me, because it was 18 years of clinical practice and then 20 years of this academics. But I feel I'm really honored. I feel I'm lucky because there are so many physiotherapists out there doing so much, but nothing like getting an award. So you feel, you know, to do more and more. Yes, that's so true. I the hospitality to... they showed, the generosity they had, and the kind of equipments they have, right from um, having a suspension therapy beds to the advanced treadmills and other equipment. So I was really impressed to see their work there. So we hope they will also give a talk to us on this. I had requested her. So um, I hope it will happen. Deshpande yes, Madam sir. from the SPM also called me that I should be there. So I was there on that day. In fact, it was just as ma'am just mentioned, it was just as if the COVID times had just kind of opened 
and uh, because of which they could not have a big gathering and they had kept that event online so we had all joined in online when ma'am was receiving the award and we were very pleased and uh, privileged to be in the company of ma'am in fact just before ma'am uh, our ex principal dr vivek kulkarni also had received a similar lifetime award and after so having two lifetime awardees in the same institute was really 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 special to us so yeah and in fact on that day i met my batchmate mangala shikhande after a long time and when she heard it was that award and she came there so it was just a surprise to see her after so many years and i thought that was also an award oh wow a friend after 1997 wow. 1999 uh, sorry 79 yeah it must be a lot <laughs> yes ma'am <laughs> after so many years so it is really nice to go to the place where you know you get the degree and things like that so all fact, the old memories came back when i went to that school in fact on that note i'm really going to take you back so <laughs> we are going to go back to where it all started so ma'am graduated from the pg school and center at gmc nagpur uh, so ma'am i would like to you to share what started your journey towards physiotherapy how did you decide that you wanted to get into this profession i feel that time i was not aware that what physiotherapy is and today i feel that the luckiest person we all physios out there are because such a profession you know that there are endless boundaries where we can work i never knew where i am stepping in but i thought somewhere i couldn't get into medicine for the reasons there were two batches coming in and only few physiotherapy colleges so i wrote to my cousin sister who uh, was there and from nagpur and she um, sent me the forms and i you know went there so it was like um a dream came true when i got the admission there because it was 10 seats only there oh okay so at time of 10 seats and only two out of nagpur university mm-hmm. so i feel i'm lucky all the life to get something like that it was golder sir when we first met and my father he said don't worry we'll take care and i was like surprised all the teachers the staff there it was really a warm welcome you know and we were very close because it's a batch of 10 and it was two and a half years course so from day one we were in the clinics and seeing patients so i feel though the course was very short we did learn a lot from all the teachers the mangala deshpande madam was teaching us it was um, ramtiki sir so we remember everyone and we never meet all it is like um, being i feel sometimes you should be student back <laughs> but yeah okay because sometimes i think when yeah like, when we were madam lal madam they were you know clinical so we had a huge academic great people to teach us so i feel the beginning and the foundation which should be great in life so i feel that began there and, and your father also was must have been a great influence i heard he was also a yoga teacher and all that so <laughs> was that influence also something that pulled you towards physiotherapy no that time i didn't connect yoga to physiotherapy exercises okay. and things but okay. i used to practice sometimes because as a young child i used to do a lot of the yoga asanas every asana i knew because mm-hmm. he had and he was a teacher he used to teach so i learned from yeah. him did a small course that certification was just a paper but that time i was even not very keen about pranayam techniques we understood the importance of yoga little bit in our you know profession as a whole i feel or personally by me but i had also done uh, my sangeet vichar and yes, the convocation wow. ceremony happened in that year in nagpur so i could get wow. the convocation yeah and my degree of sangeet vichar in nagpur otherwise i wouldn't have got there i'm basically from nasik so i got the degree in nagpur before i got the physiotherapy degree So that's a yeah, really that's a pleasant a nice coincidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, just to add to that, I should tell the viewers that Ma'am sings beautifully. So in some of the gatherings, we actually insist Ma'am to kind of sing, and uh, the best part is she has no uh, inhibitions. So the minute someone forces her, she just breaks into a song. I think she really loves her singing also, and I guess that must be a way of relaxation also for her. and of course he has trained professionally also in that so ma'am that must have been a 
different experience by itself i think that must have happened during your schooling if i'm not yes, mistaken yes since i was in fourth standard i started before i went to physiotherapy i just passed and then even during the um, you know before joining this course i was completing that degree so it was wow. like, so ma'am is really multi talented in many ways yeah. so we'll move on yeah. and uh, yes ma'am tell us about something about this picture yeah. so now. before completing the internship actually uh, i got to know that there was a vacancy in artificial limb center in pune so during the diwali i came and i applied and they called for an interview so i they it said okay you can join so i said i will complete my internship and then i'll be joining so i had a offer letter in my hand i i joined as i you know completed my degree um, so it was really nice to join an institute and i had not known what artificial limb center was at that time I had seen few amputee patients during undergraduation but here it was a whole set and it's a great institute and there were nine other um military train staff and it was only myself okay. they are looking after children and women you know so they put me in that oh, section wow. so it was a great experience all together but it was a little bit far away for me and then i thought i would like to have little more and very the experience i was not knowing that i should i focus on this only and i got to know mm-hmm. that sanchiti hospital has an opportunity and there are uh, you know vacancies there so less than a year i got into sanchiti hospital which is that's close what... to my place also and yes. it was like great so that time hospital. yeah so ma'am uh, so you were in pune i mean soon after your graduation you moved to pune yeah i was doing the job so i moved to pune and then okay. i got married when okay. i was working in artificial limb center okay okay yeah i got married at that time okay and then <laughs> i thought now i'll be in pune because i'm married so i have to think for a little bit long term something so then i joined sanchiti hospital so i guess now it's called sanchiti institute of orthopedics and orthopedics rehabilitation and rehabilitation that but at that time it was called as sanchiti hospital yeah but it's still known as sanchiti hospital even exactly. today i exactly. think people like that shorter name instead of yeah. calling sanchiti institute for orthopedics rehab so hospital they feel yeah this is the i i feel that we also and there i got opportunity to you know work under great orthopedicians and even i was blessed to work under um, padma vibhushan dr k h sanchiti sir himself so it and going for rounds with him and there were other therapists dr telia so i learned a lot over here so ma'am very early on in your career i guess you had a wonderful and varied experience of working under the greats yes i feel yes that's that's really true and then my i got my first daughter i was still working part time in sanchiti and then after my second daughter was born then i said let me have a break and look up to children a bit so then i left the job and i started my own setup at my place so you were working house. in sanchiti hospital for 5 years as yes. uh, it's been from 1980 to 85 and then you took a little break and you started your own practice yes so then i started okay, my own practice uh-huh. and then doing you know around small hospitals and things in so that time you were purely into clinical right ma'am so there was no college at that time no no there was no college at that time in fact sanchiti sir had come to for the opening of my clinic so oh, wow. okay it was a proud privilege to uh-huh, uh-huh. that he came oh, wow. the simplicity uh-huh. and the blessings right. you know i learned from him a lot to be really calm and work so hard looking at him we grow with looking at great people i feel and um, great colleagues like you so no much in fact i was going work. to say the other way so I... with the own practice also it was a completely different experience you know working with people going to small hospitals and adjusting work and children because yes, i feel even family is important so yes, it's lucky yes, yes. to have part time job because this this that can be a big struggle yes, but somewhere yes. i think you also have done like have to you know cut down a work bit and then gear back into work when we are relatively free because that gives us a whole 
something and a um, good life also i feel that is also needed yes ma'am i guess there has to be a work life balance i guess all of us have to kind of learn how to kind of do it and if there's a supportive family i think it goes a long way in helping you to make your career also and balance your home life also i guess yes ma'am then i guess your, yeah. yeah my husband decided he got a good opportunity to work um with pata motors in sultanat of oman and so i said okay i can also apply over there and then we went there in 1989 to masjid sultanat of oman um for few months i was at home setting everything and getting a driving license and everything out there from there i got a job at royal hospital and there i said it was a general hospital i had worked for orthopedics since long and in general hospital set up right from antenatal postnatal to women's health outpatients to medical surgical wards to pico nicu adult icu everything was there and a big huge setup of opd where there was lasers there was interventional currents i had never seen this it was not in our curriculum so i said okay give me a chance and the hod is out she was they were brilliant they were all uk trained staff some from australia from european countries and i said can i have a six month rotation so i had eight eight different rotations in different six different rotations and i continued opd for two rotations wow so i got a chance to work under supervision and they they were you know the senior and we were the junior therapists and i like that because they used to take us to the ward actually show us how to do it she in fact said i had never done suction i have seen in my internship seniors doing but i had not done so she said do on me and then you will be very careful when you are doing on patients so some experiences that teachers have taught that was great so i think this experience over here and i saw that they were health professional council members and thing so i thought what this is you know get me get registered at this health profession council is there and actually at that time itself i just registered i had no idea what i'll be doing further but that has worked for me great so we have decided to be there for five years and come back for the daughter's education because at that time they were not very um, good institutions now got to change a lot they have universities they have all the courses over there but that time we had decided eighth and fourth we'll come back to india so we came back okay so we came back in 1994 and then that time i got a call i was thinking i'll start my private practice again first but that time the college had started in cmr yeah that's what i was saying yeah i was called there that can you work as a academician mm-hmm. i said i have never i am a clinician but they said yeah everybody in pune is most of people are like like that so um, dr zawli he called and i said okay let me have this opportunity let me try because as a young child i feel everybody plays teacher teacher right so that time we feel somebody will be a teacher or a doctor all those things are there as a young child so i thought okay let me be trying this so i joined the college there and then it was the next experience when i joined this college i realized that as an undergraduate teacher i am not very equipped you know to teach you have to have some more advanced knowledge to teach and keep up with the new things i was up with the new but we need something more as a extra so i decided that i'll do post graduation without it before that i never thought even my father used to say do you post they just started in mumbai when i graduated it was but mumbai they were not offering for outs there were a lot of things then i had um, only nagpur that was again with research and i had to leave and go there and stay and do so then i started looking that where could i do my post graduation there were not many dhim universities or anything where the courses were offered so i looked worldwide and i thought i am the health professional council registered member so i saw many universities application also there with facts and doing things letters it was a big thing 
but then i got actually admission in three universities over there from india and i was a little bit nervous saying if i go there pay so much for fees and then i don't know the uk system with two children looking after their education or where i'll put money in my education so then i decided i'll have a work experience in uk i'll go and see how the system is see whether i'll be able to manage and then get the admission in the next year so i was again interview was online over the phone and i got the offer in catherine general hospital there through an agency and they were really good and the person even took me to the up to the hospital right from the airport so he threw international to air catherine he drew me there so wow. i i went there and stayed okay. i looked around and it was again general hospital it was great because i already had worked in you know the um, musket so i had no problems working there i was great and i thought it's i can cope up with the studies unfortunately i got to know that admissions will, will be open in the second semester also okay. so i went to the university i chatted so they said yeah and that's how then i entered into the university of london yeah so tell us about your experience that, there ma'am i so, feel the flexibility which uk and other countries have with the modules the choice of modules with different options that okay if you cannot complete in two years then you can opt out up to one year with a diploma or if you don't manage you will get a post graduate certificate so there are many options and flexibility that if you some of them you know could not complete so there is an option that yes you can do the modules at your own pace so even they allow to do for longer period of time which i didn't require any year but i feel they want itself to ask about the research and what i would like to do and it was maggie restall the physiotherapy in charge there she was very 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 encouraging and i told that yes i want to do in women's health and actually i was ready with two projects and she liked it that i went that with the readiness of what i want to do in the research and she said oh you are ready so we will check with professor jin mantel who was about to retire and she everybody knows about jin mantel the expert in women's health around the globe and she is she is such a pleasant person and personality so next time when i went she was there i met her i talked my guide was actually karan atkinson co guide was jin mantel because she was uh, visiting so this uh, photograph which is given here is of ma'am's guide who is Karen Atkinson, Karen Atkinson who I mean, she has written a lot of textbooks so she, she yeah, yeah 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 and of course who can forget jill mantel so this very fame uh, popular physiotherapy in obstetrics and gynecology which we all refer to is written by bolden and jill mantel who was ma'am's co guide so ma'am even karen atkinson must have been uh, influence in the time that you did your post graduation because we have read her textbooks yes she was like more muscular clearly mine i have chosen as general she okay. has even written books on you know orthopedic yes 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 ma'am yes yes, yes, yes. orthopedic yes. and uh, she was a great researcher and a great teacher so we had the modules of research methods biomechanics posture and gait women's health so okay. all those things so we there was a very systematic approach a big library i love the library even in catherine general hospital i work the library in muskat was great i feel great libraries make us uh, exactly. read more and we feel more interested in you know getting things yeah, yeah. done because new york book um, come so it was another women's health book had just come and we were really happy to read because that helped even connecting to my research in post graduation and they allowed me the best part was they allowed me to do the research going back to india because i said i don't okay. intend to be in uk and i would like to work and do the research in my country because that will be more applicable and feasible for me mm-hmm. so after one year of contact modules they actually allowed me i had got my synopsis approved for the study and everything 
and I came back and I worked on my research project in India. So oh, nice. that kind of approach people have, and I feel you should have. That so flexibility. That can grow up. That yes. Flexibility which was there. I think it helped you to achieve more. I think it, right? I feel Otherwise, really, if you were very rigid, if they were very rigid that you have I to wouldn't stay. have, you know, yes. I would have struggled to be there for a long exactly. time. Exactly. And after I had 18 years of clinical experience almost. So I feel that also helped me in getting the post-graduation. Though it's hard to go back into study, but I was alone there. My husband took care. So I could completely, you know, only Educate. pay attention to my work. So for one year, coming back was again doing the research and then writing for it. All that took, took a lot. But I feel... Because of this experience that helped me. These days, you know, it's immediate. We don't have time. After undergraduation, post-graduation, then immediately PhD. Exactly. So I feel like now you are doing your PhD yourself. You can imagine yourself if you had now your level of skill, knowledge, you know. It is, it matters the most, I feel. Everybody, means I feel you should give a little more time. Have the yes. experience yes. and then you know, maybe, I'm, I don't know, people are more skilled, they are more uh, maybe having great knowledge to persuade that. But I feel experience also matters to submit a little more. Surely, yes. But things have changed. I feel the world is changing. Yes. But it happened to me in the right way. So I'm really happy that I did it with a break. Yes. And then coming back, I, I again got a chance to come back and start working at Sanchit College of Physiotherapy when Dr. Sapnis Madam was there, Kulkari Sir, and um, my team. So again, it was coming back home to Sanchit Hospital, working five years, then coming to Sanchit College of Physiotherapy, where in 2000, I joined college. And then we got to know lots about the academics, already I had worked at another college. But then coming here was completely different. The research, the kind of research is undertaken here and encouraged here by the management, it really works. It helps. Mm -hmm. that, yes, there are opportunities, so we should take it. Yes. And hence, I thought of undertaking a PhD. And it was lucky enough to work under KJ sir himself and he agreed. So he got the professor emeritus status at the Pune University and then I enrolled for the PhD at that point of time. So that also was a very opportune moment for ma'am that uh, Dr. KHS, uh, Dr. K. H. Sancheti himself was appointed as a professor emeritus to the Pune University and ma'am was able to pursue her uh, PhD under his guidance. So Ma'am, even that, I think it's like everything falls in place somehow, you know, at the right, uh, being at the right place at the right time, I would say, was something that has worked for you. It has always worked and yes. still working. <laughs> so it's really good. So in that process, my daughter got admission to Liverpool Women's, uh, sorry, Liverpool University to do her electronics with a um, scholarship. So I said, I took permission and I said in Liverpool, I'll see a job and if I can get one or two years to be with her slightly, 18 year old going there. And I said, I'll continue my research in over there also. And they were yoga classes. Mm -hmm. So I uh, got an opportunity and I got permission even to do my project over there. Here I undertook another project um, and in the terms of women's health. It was like pelvic floor activation in singing, during singing. And oh. I feel I wanted to have something to incorporate yoga, music, and physiotherapy exercises because all these years I was uh, wanting to have something which will work all together. And I feel there are many ch chances like dance, music. We know that so we have to be recreational in doing exercise. And that project... I was also very happy to do that project. And so ma'am, it was basically bringing all your loves together. It was your love for music, it was your love for uh, yoga, and it was your love for 
physiotherapy i think it amalgamated or blended itself into something which you i mean you i guess your natural passion towards research and all these aspects or facets of your own talent you kind of amalgamated it to do something together with all of this so it was very very short term study because i didn't have much time to stay there for long okay but they allowed but it was the ethical committee you know going in front of the ethical committee to to mm-hmm. up take up this project on pelvic floor they asked a lot of questions what will happen if there is a, so all that gave me like the paper work we had to undertake doing that project was much more than doing my pg or a phd even so i was like i really got experience about this what happens with the ethical committee and how to you know survive all that and how the project really gets more enhanced when people look critically at your work because though it was small 3 weeks only it should i said we'll see just the minimal change but that happened so that was great and i continued doing my phd work and i then came back i got the opportunity for going and having this experience so again yeah going on lean yes and then that, again back. that's what i'm saying everything i mean ma'am got a great opportunity to work in many places which helped her to i think it widens one's perspective also about physiotherapy i mean the very fact that when when you went to muscat you were able to handle all these advanced electrotherapy which you would not have got a chance if you were in india i guess because of them having more advanced clinics even the fact that you did your msc in uh, pt in uk it broadened your uh, the thing about research also and again entering into liverpool women's hospital and doing another research project there I guess all this must have broadened your perspective about many things. Yes, actually the Gate Lab means there oh, are so you, many things. Okay. The Gate Lab at University of East London, the electromyography, electrodiagnostic equipment, yes. the experiments with with the with that. It is. It was completely different. I had not seen the Gate Lab. I had actually uh, not seen how the edge reflex and all is done. So. how to see the fatigue level with emg so all mm-hmm. all that things really uh, get increases your experiences your skills in liverpool mm-hmm. women's there was equipment where there was a dual channel electromyography where we could do a lots with teaching the pelvic floor equipments were available funding was there to do research so that really matters i feel to gain the experience and the skills and knowledge they also sent for doing more courses during you know on job training that you could take up this so that advances your skills that do on the continuous mechanism do on this that so every hospital they sent to do this courses we also try to do we want to get more equipped and learn because skills are important and knowledge too but i got the opportunities and i feel at sanchiti the same train continues so like you are taking a workshop so that's going to happen that's all to you know train people in a right way yes and funding for research is enhanced here so much yes that we undertake research to get it you know publication we want the equipment we get to the equipment so right. we are still wanting we always want for in this ma'am i would like to take this opportunity to also ask you i mean you have also worked with many senior physiotherapists i mean when you were working and along the time that you were in pune or otherwise you have worked with dr zavle sir you have worked with uma paran swe ma'am you have worked with mirzan kan ma'am you got to work with sabnis ma'am i guess even these people must have somehow influenced your uh, practice in some way or the other yes i feel dr kulkarni sir dr vidya madam yes even dr kulkarni and um, dr joshi madam so we used to discuss yeah, a lot yeah. we used to be very close and it was like one office for everyone so we were even razia ma'am yeah i guess yeah. sapnis so ma'am razia was, ma'am in the space we had one cupboard for all of us so we were like you know day in and day out discussing things so i feel un- knowingly we do learn a lot yes and knowingly we get to know so much Yes, that is there and working under the worldwide therapist that my perspective really changed so mm-hmm. i was encouraged in fact to give my presentation in the wcpt conference which i did in japan yes ma'am 
Yeah. I was wanting so, to ask you that. Yeah, so, so that was there in many conferences. I got presentation in Maharashtra conference, in IIP conference, in the WCPT, I, the Asia West Pacific conference. Where yes, I talked about the project in the done in the Liverpool Women's Hospital. So okay. and number of opportunities and presentations of uh, your research was done in many places and one thing was i also had the wcpt at uh, london japan and also the uh, wcpt which was collaborative even i think ma'am you were there even in for the mumbai conference i guess which was done in collaboration with the uh, mumbai the I, West I, Asia Pacific region that yes, was yeah. that conference yes ma'am yes ma'am and then there was iip conference in pune where I yes, was a scientific for chairperson yes. for scientific committee. Yes. So there are a number of things happening. Ma'am, you also, uh, as after your PhD, you also went on to, I mean, you uh, kind of came back into Sancheti Institute and College of Physiotherapy in a very active role. You became a postgraduate uh, uh, guide. You also became a PhD guide. So you were working with Pune University as well as with MUHS. Yes. Uh, yes. In fact, in 2006, the MUHS PG started at MUHS. And then I was in the board of study of PG UG at that point of time. Yes, and we developed the three years curriculum and course. And then in 2013, I got the opportunity to become the chairperson of BOS and the academic council member and the member of the research committee and the member of the anti plagiarism board. And there were so many committees that I just couldn't travel to Nasik so many times. But I got to know how the university things do work, how to develop the curriculum courses. And that was also tremendous to know about what is happening to work with MBHS. Thankfully, I feel this COVID situation has taught us a lot. I feel Technology was always there in the background. But now since we can't work without it, we, we are all, I feel, having an advantage that we learned how to use so many things going on life. Exactly. So when university wants to upgrade ourselves and they are also supporting, you know, yes. to get the new connectivity, the new techniques, ICT enabled things and so on and so forth. So I feel we all should uh, be consistently trying to get abreast. I yes. feel the people of fact, my uh, generation should be abreast with all this because it's in needed. In fact, I think ma'am is one of those very few people who has really embraced it wholly and solely. Electrotherapy has always been close to ma'am's heart. but And so she's a pro at electrotherapy. But she has also been very good at embracing whatever technological advances came the way. As ma'am just mentioned about COVID, becoming very well-versed with online uh, uh, presentations, uh, Zoom sessions. I mean, ma'am took to it like a fish in water. I think there was not much of uh, learning graph that ma'am needed for most of the technology because she has always, I think, liked technology or technological advances. I think even her experience at various stages of her career has had ma'am being exposed to many advances and her taking a natural liking to this has only helped her to pick things faster. I think I have seen that in you, ma'am. <laughs> uh, yes, I believe that we should enjoy our work and we should have good skills, knowledge, and we should be, I feel as an academician, it gives more opportunity to be with students, to grow with them. Yes. We really grow with students. They keep us abreast, abreast with the new studies, the advances and things. So by choice, I decided I would be a clinician. Of course, we all are. But then being an academician, can we have administration work to some degree, but we can have all and the research. So getting the as a PhD guide in 2012 and having the PhD scholar working under, that again gives more chance to know what is happening here. So that is great, you know. Though the publications came a little later in my career, so I we always say to our students that don't make the mistakes that to wait for a long time to get published. 
because even parak sir manisha madam they encourage that yes they know the importance so know the importance of publication and he had said that first paper you get published in the good you have a copy so i had a chance to have a copy with him so that okay. is really great you know okay. that's so great which is is also encouraging all this which is yes, good yes i guess now the mantra for the new academicians is publish, publish or perish you know so it's basically uh, keep i mean whatever good work you are doing in research see that it reaches the wider audience because that's what's the purpose of all research that whatever you are doing in terms of uh, uh, looking into some uh, i mean doing an rct or doing a observational study or an analytical study let your research findings be published so that the audience of physiotherapists clinicians worldwide get to learn from your research i think the ultimate aim of every research is so that it can reach to a wider public yes and ultimately benefit patients ma'am uh, taking that note i think uh, we would also like to know your personal side your personal development how it happened and after that i would like you to tell us about what is your advice to the gen next personal development happened side to side by having the career growth i feel and i always enjoy being at home like cooking doing things and knitting singing came a little late that is taking a back seat now i use, i love dance but little bit now i feel next year onwards i'll get more chance to incorporate that also i feel many things i love to do Right, from knitting to stitching to sewing and what wow. not so there are many opportunities in life and we should change our things and have a recreational approach i feel and i feel as a, a professional we should always study yes because knowledge is power i yes. feel you know more it grows you so i feel yes. and diversified field so we, you should always have something parallel which you mm-hmm. love enjoying also sometimes one monotonous thing i know that one getting one mastery that's fine but something in the recreation creation creativity that's really important um i feel research should be done to understand what new things are coming up and how to overcome that problems so i feel research is still needed for all of us being clinician or anything because how to handle the newer emerging problems we will know only by doing research we cannot say that yes this works only for this x person so i feel getting knowledge studying doing the research and of course practice we can't go without practice because even if we go to the clinics with our patients we actually have to show how we practice and our new thing i feel we don't give only pills or injection isn't it we have to actually educate the patients and we have to motivate our patients and inspire them to take care of themselves i feel that challenge we must be instilling in our students because how to do that to encourage to help themselves yeah all because in, i guess that's why the therapist oh now i have to do so many exercises many yes. patients have this approach so we have to motivate we have to instill this in our students and in yes. our patients i think in fact uh, with a country like india i think this is a very cost effective way because not everyone can afford you know even uh, even in a municipal hospital to come every day for physiotherapy because they have to travel from some place so even the traveling is the conveyance is also a little costly for them so i guess if we can move towards this approach ma'am i think it will help the general public especially the ones who are you know uh, whose socio economic conditions are not favorable i guess this we, will go a long way we really way. have to evaluate them and we have to give them what they could manage to do and for that we again we need to be innovative and rec- creational Yes. to understand and have the approach how to instill in them so like patient education is coming up and knowing about the skills and communication i feel that i learned in the last couple of years and how to actually teach so that is also uh, some are inborn like born teachers but for some you need that skills you need to know how to do it and that's really important 
because if you are not having you are not equipped you may not convey the correct message you may see oh i have taught and i have come out of the class but what the students have understood mm -hmm. then only you will know if they are performing that yes you have done something you know so yes. i feel that is really important that how we communicate with our students with our patients and how we manage to develop our skills i feel that is really important for us and i feel our team is great everybody has got you know different ideas and we work so much so good so i feel in a personal life i feel i'm content because if you come home and you are happy and going college morning blue somebody says i have never had because you feel like oh you to go and work you know so i feel that something if it is happening to you then that's fine that yes i had you a, have got into the right profession that means and then yeah you have to enjoy what you are doing yeah, and then exactly you will work harder yes you will work harder because you want to reach something more you want to offer something more because ultimately we are in a healthcare profession yes so all this will go in making our life beautiful when people around us are happy you know okay ma'am so i'm very thankful to you to give me this chance you know to speak ma'am we would like to thank you because i am sure this interview and uh, the way ma'am's journey has started you know into how she got into physiotherapy how she has come a long way and the very recent lifetime achievement award that ma'am has got it all sums up uh, about the person that she is in fact there are many facets of ma'am's life that i came to know when i took this interview uh, that the way she is very multi talented with many stuff i mean it's not only uh, the physiotherapy itself it's her love for learning it's her love for uh, dance it's a love for music and uh, uh tailoring embroidery stitching i never knew ma'am had those uh, facets also and this along with being uh, you know a mother to two children and now grandmother so you know she has come a long way in her personal life also and her professional life also so it was very uh, kind of uh, i would say a opportune time to kind of take this pearls of wisdom from ma'am and i'm sure the generation next are going to learn from your journey ma'am yeah and, i uh, just want to i hope uh, yeah, yeah. All... before yeah before we forget yeah actually got the government merit scholarships in physiotherapy you know first and final year and oh, during wow. my internship there was a class oil painting class so i had given the everybody does that drawing exams and everything yes so the class was there so after doing the work at hospital coming back and doing paintings so the oil paintings i have so i feel life takes you everywhere you just have to see what you can you know inculcate and do good i also like at a leisure i keep quiet for some time i'm just aram se even watch tv and not feeling guilt about that yes. what i'm doing you know exactly because that helps and that yes. makes our mind and everything more calm yes. and maybe i didn't have to struggle in my personal life yeah mm -hmm. you were asking about personal life i never had so many of the responsibilities maybe some have a lot of family responsibilities which luckily my husband and me shared but we didn't have to pursue take care of very long ill anybody mm -hmm. and that again my husband besides me and my daughter saying that they are all fine all that works i feel yes i am blessed to have a good life very supportive uh, family yes so you should yes. be really so there's that also to what you have in life i feel yes ma'am and then only you achieve more and more true very true i think having a support always makes you go that extra length and you know do a little more than what you were able to do if you didn't have that support so nirima ma'am as we kind of uh, come towards the very end of this road very interesting road that you have taken uh, which was really less traveled uh, what what further additions would you kind of uh, want to talk about i actually would like to thank all my people who have supported me throughout so i would like to acknowledge them all just uh, taking 2 minutes of this time 
I feel it's very important because I'm very blessed in life to get all these uh, opportunities and to have the path successfully till now. So I would say my parents who have and my brother who has always on my side, my brother uh, supported my parents all the time. My mother did her, all her studies after the marriage and she was she is very, very hard working and she's worked as a school teacher. So she she has like inspired me a lot, I would say. Uh, my cousin's sister, Dr. Jyoti Kerkar, who was the person who actually, because of her, I'm a therapist today. Because she sent me the forms from Nagpur University. I had no idea what physiotherapy was. So I thank you, Jyoti Tai. Um, and I stayed with my Atyam, um, Mrs. Nalini Bodbole, late Mrs. Nalini Bodbole and her husband, who welcomed me. And I was there at staying with them for one year till I got the admission in um, the college hostel. So it was that one year of mine, which was the first step into this profession was so happy and joyful, you know, apart from being in the college, I, I enjoyed staying with them as well. So I would say all my friends who encouraged me in my undergraduation, post-graduation, my husband Shirish and my daughters, because of whom I am here today in my professional life. All my teachers, my guides, the undergraduate and postgraduate, and my PhD guide. Um, kids, Sanchiti sir, Parak Sanchiti sir, who has encouraged all the research and the publications happened because I, I give full credit to him. Um, Ms. Manisha Sangvi, ma'am, our executive director, she has supported me all throughout, you know getting all the opportunities, sending me all over, giving the permissions for everything. Um, our senior staff, like Dr. Malshi sir, Dr. Kolatkar sir, Mrs. Kolatkar madam, uh, who were there, Kundalkar madam, who was there, uh, Sabdis madam, Vivek Kulkarni sir, and Joshi madam, who were there early in my career, who were there with me. Now, Professor Razia, the Garwala Madam, and all my colleagues, including our department staff, Sona Madam yourself. So all, of, all are very supportive and very encouraging. I feel the students also have made me strong by raising so much aware, like being with us always, and especially, you know, checking every time whether I was okay. How are the things, you know, encouraging me to read more and more. <laughs> so that also helped me and guided me in my career. So if I have missed anyone, I apologize for that. And I feel there are so many people in life. I have to really give my thanks and my regards to all of them. So and I seek to continue the blessings. And thank you, Dr. Sona, for giving so much of a time in interviewing me on um, this path yes. and you will be you are in the footsteps already much more ahead mm -hmm. so that's really well done so um, I hope yeah in fact the pleasure has all been ours uh from the entire team of physio tv we would really like to thank Vilima ma'am for taking out the time and really telling us about this very different journey that she charted in her professional career and i'm sure all our listeners are going to take some way or the other, some inspiration from your journey, ma'am. And I'm sure there are a lot of life lessons which have to be learned from you. And we are very fortunate at Sanchiti Institute to still be under the care and guidance of uh, Nilima, ma'am. And I'm more fortunate that I belong to the same department. So from that yeah, note... Dr. Apuro, sir, who is also oh, yes, us yes, to support not forget. Yes. Yeah. So all the past principals and even our present very dynamic uh, Dr. Apurva Shimpi, sir, and uh, from the Physio TV, we would also like to kind of really thank uh, Manisha Sangvi, ma'am, who's our executive director, as well as Parag sir, who's our chairman of the Sancheti Institute, uh, to have supported our Physio TV endeavors. And uh, we now end the session of the Road Less Traveled with Nilima Bedekar, ma'am. Uh, and I'm sure it's going to be a very enriching uh, talk. And I thank everyone once again. So from the entire team, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.